On today's show, we ask, who are Eddie and Gordon? We take a tour round Gordon's collectibles room. We talk about conventions, collectibles and the latest movies. We will review a number of items from Gordon's collection, including Hot Toys figures and an RS Propmasters X-Wing helmet. Hello. Hello. And welcome to our brand new YouTube channel, The Eddie and Gordon Show. Each episode, we're going to try and discuss and talk about our collectibles, movies, conventions, both ones we've attended in the past and ones we're going to attend in the future. We'll do uh, some reviews of the things we have. We'll talk about some new collectibles on the market, maybe talk about the pre-orders that we've placed. So stay tuned. Uh, first of all, we're going to do a bit of a tour around uh, where we are just now, which is my collection room. Um, the next episode we'll record direct from Eddie's collection room uh, and we'll take it week about there on in. Mm -hmm. yep. um, so yeah, have a, a stay tuned for the next uh, 20 minutes or so and uh, hopefully we'll be able to entertain you. First things first, let us try and tell you a little bit about ourselves. So Golden, yeah. how long have you been collecting for? Oh, that's a, that's a good question. So. I guess I started collecting when I was a teenager and I kicked off with the old VHS. When I was in my teenage years, I loved movies, so I used to go out HMV and buy all these different VHSs. I think I had about over a hundred at one point, and then you'd go on eBay, and eBay in the late 90s was in its infancy, so you would go on eBay and hunt down the various titles, you know, one of them was Restless Natives, it's mm -hmm. a very localised Scottish film. Great film, um, recommended. Well, absolutely amazing, but probably only a niche audience I'm, is going to be going to have seen Wrestler's mm -hmm. Natives, but it's a uh, it's a classic and a fantastic soundtrack by Big Country. Oh, absolutely, yeah, well. yeah, absolutely. So um, I went, I really went from there, going from VHS video cassettes, and at, at the time in the late nineties, the collectibles market was really non-existent. I would say I wasn't aware of it, mm -hmm. and internet at the time was all very much fifty six K modem dial up and. There wasn't a lot of websites out there. Um, but I think really I started collecting actual things from movies like props, etc. around about the year 2000. And do you remember the first, you, things the got? first thing you got? Well, yeah, yeah, it really kicked so, it all off. I stumbled across a website called the Prop Store of London, now quite a, mm -hmm, a famous right, yeah, website. Right. But at the time, um, you know, this was, it, it probably just started off. I don't know when the props were mm -hmm. started off, but to me, it was like, it just came across it. And I bought three things. I had a credit card and I was 21. And I thought, oh, you absolute beauty. At the time, um, in fact, it was probably 2001 because that's when Lord of the Rings really came out. But I, the first thing I bought was a United Cutlery mm -hmm. Sting Frodo Bag and Sword. I also. You still have that? Yeah. Yeah, and it's up in the wall. Um, I also bought the Factory X Gladiator helmet. I um, think you've still got that. It's fine. Yeah, it's oh, fine. Yeah. It's, it's all busted. Yeah. It's a good clean. Yeah. And I also bought a screen used prop, and mm -hmm. it ended up I found that it was a couple of hundred pound. It was a water bottle used in the movie The Beach. You ever saw The Beach? Leonardo. Leonardo DiCaprio. It was That's a, a good screen good used prop. bottle. Right. That um, I mean, you're talking about a plastic Evian water bottle. It was nothing fancy, but a plastic Evian water bottle worth three hundred pounds. Is that how much it was? Yeah. But Leonardo man. DiCaprio used this bottle to scoosh a monkey in right. these heroin or cannabis fields or whatever it was. Um, subsequently, I don't have that anymore. That was sold quite quickly. But um, you know, you do these kind of things in your your naivety. You, mm -hmm. you don't. You don't know what's out there. You go, oh, that's pretty cool. I'll buy that. Yeah. I didn't even mm -hmm. really. The film was good, but it wasn't. But it was within my price range. Mm -hmm. You know, I couldn't afford a screen new Star Wars helmet or anything like that. Um, and it's really just went from there. At the moment, I think I've got about seventy five different singular items. I think I've sold some like one hundred and seventy different things. <laughs> and there's lots of regrets. That Is there any you've actually made. sold? Well, obviously, you know what I'm like, and we'll come to that. <laughs> um, <laughs> is there any you've actually sold and bought back? No, generally, if I sell something, I've had it and I move on. Right. I can't think of a single thing that I've. In fact, that I've, I don't. I can't think of anything that I've ever had and bought back yet. 
but there are a few things if I look through my soul list I'll, I'll go I'm mm -hmm. that again mm -hmm. there's, a, there's probably three or four things that I want I'm like yeah I'll, I'll, I want to get that again but um, there's that many new things coming out nowadays it's, yep. you look through eBay and you think well that looks good and that looks good and then the next day bang something new mm -hmm. comes up well then there's something, and else, it's a constant something else coming out yeah, yeah it's, like, it's like a constant you know. struggle you, you know you've always got something on pre-order mm -hmm. and we'll come on to pre-orders at some point I'm sure mm -hmm. um, I've got at least four or five pre-orders right now big stuff I mean we're talking about large expensive items mm -hmm. one of one which is a Robocop bust yep. from Chronicle mm -hmm. Collectibles um, and I've got my own things that haven't even been released yet so we'll, we'll talk about this later but there's something um, a new company called Queen Studios mm -hmm. And they're doing um, busts, silicon busts. You know, I think I've seen the one. So the, the, the army one. one. Yeah, yeah. T T hundred. Nice. I mean, the silicon hand punched hair uh, is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Three thousand two hundred pound. So they're not cheap. So what about you? I've talked talked long and hard about what what what. I've, how how did you get into collectibles? Um. Well. See what you're saying, you're saying about videotapes. I used to collect videotapes, but I used to collect like the old VHS as well. Mm -hmm. And yeah, yeah, yeah. came back, God, that's about 25 years ago or something like that. Uh, but my my collection consisted, consisted of like the old ones that were banned. Yeah. She like, you know, like the exorcist at the time, yeah, right? Yeah, you know, that, the videotapes used to go for like, you know, that would be like a hundred pound for yeah. that, that videotape. Yeah, yeah. And they were rare as hell and Texas Chainsaw Massacre and like the burning and stuff like that, yeah. Evil Dead. Um, so that's what I was into. Um, and then I went into Laserdisc as well. I had Laserdisc, oh, laser uh, laser laser disc, which was pretty impressive, which obviously we then get took over with DVD. But so that was probably my first experience with you know, being collecting or something, you know, trying to hunt stuff down and all that. And as you say, with the internet, the internet was, uh, you know, it was really crap then, and there was yeah. no much available. Yeah. So, but obviously now, it's like it just opens a whole new world to you with the internet. But anyway, so probably about two, early two thousand. Then it was like I got myself a. Uh, again, stuff on the internet came across. It was a, a master replica. Uh, was it the Darth Vader or was it the, do you know what, I think it was the Darth Vader signature edition lightsaber signed with Dave Prowse, it was a return of the Jedi one. Just the one, it wasn't the jewel, it was like just a single one. Do you know what, I actually had the jewel one. The James Earl Jones? Yes, I'm That's sold it. Oh. Right, so anywho, right. Pop forget. <laughs> <Pop again. laughs> I don't know, anywho, uh, so I, the first one I bought was probably the return of the Jedi, Darth Vader, Master Replica, signature edition one. As I said, signed with Dave Prowse and I still have that. And then I think, I wanted to get off then I think if I recall right was my next piece was the Return of the Jedi Master Replica Luke Skywalker signature edition. The weather saver. Weather it's a, I say V2 yeah. version V2. two, it's the weathered one. So that was to kind of go along with the with the Darth Vader one. Uh, and probably then that was a it kind of kicked off and then I know I remember the next one I got was the Master Replica Boba Fett Blaster. Yeah. Yeah. Which um really Big, it was massive. It was, about that, it was about that size. Huge. It was uh, massive and I sold it. So, <laughs> 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 another regret uh, for my side. So, that's probably where it started for me um, getting that bit. Do you know how many things you have in your collection right now? No. Do you know how, do you have a guess I don't know how many things is. you've sold over the years? No. I've sold I mean, a lot. It, it must be in its hundreds. I've sold a lot. And my, I've got a problem. And I'm going, oh, it? obviously, you know, <laughs> I buy stuff, I sell it, yeah. I regret it, yeah. I buy it back, yeah. I sell it, <laughs> I regret it, and then I buy it back again. So I've, I've had items maybe three or four times, and sometimes I keep buying after the same person I sold it to. Uh, it's just, it's like just, a yo -yo it's just ridiculous, yeah. it's, uh, and you know, I do regret it. <laughs> So what, what I thought we would do now is we'll do a bit of a tour of the collection room to show the guys out there kind of what, what's coming up because what I'd like to try and do is review something every week from mm -hmm. what we both have. Mm -hmm. So this week we'll do some things that I have and then the next time coming from your collection we'll do a couple of things from you. Mm -hmm. So onwards and upwards, on to the tour.
Okay, so we are going to take a tour round um, my room where all my collectibles are. We have the Master Replicas Look Blaster. Uh, then we have the ESB um, Look Skywalker Saber. Moving up to Return of the Jedi Master Replica Saber. We've got the Obi Wan Kenobi Saber. And we have the Darth Vader Saber with signature plaque. And then right next to that, we've got the EFX Darth Vader lid. A um, couple of autographs. We've got Mark Hamill up here, signed in person, and Carrie Fisher. Moving down, a couple of Lord of the Rings swords, Boromir and Strider. And then as we move off to the left-hand wall, this is where we see my, the bulk of my what's left of the 1-6 collection. So you can see here we've got the DeLorean, we've got the, the Camel Tumbler over on the left. We have a little Atat. And then we've got some Robocops, um, all hot toys, apart from this one, which is custom. Again, we'll review that at some point. You can see the signature plaques moving along to the uh, Blitzway Ghostbusters. Up above, we have the Batman Armoury, the DX11 um, Joker, Bane, Joker again, Yondu, Neo, Jack Sparrow. And then up above, we've got Chappie, Predator 2, Deadpool, Harley Quinn, and Michael J. Fox as Martin McFly. With the background I made myself to replicate the, the Doc Brown Enterprise van, signed in person by Christopher Lloyd and Lee Thompson. Moving down, one of the best things I probably have is the full Boba Fett Return of the Jedi suit. Um, this is a wearable costume, although to be perfectly frank, I am too short for it. You're probably the right height, aren't you, Eddie? Aye. So I'm only five foot five, I'm only a, a short guy, but you're five foot. No, I'm six foot. Are you six foot? Six foot one, I think. Yeah, so you would be a tall fit, I'd be right. short fit. Well, I can stand next to you and I you, you, you stand next to it. So but, Fett's probably on a shorter mannequin than he should be. Um, I think uh, Jeremy was about, run about my height. You're probably right. I think he was about six foot anyway. No, but, probably but that's right. ideal anyway. But yeah, I mean, it, I mean, it was a mannequin I had to hack and saw apart. But once, I mean, it, <laughs> it, it took me a full day to put the mannequin together, and get the arms in a position, and then put everything together. I really don't want to take it off the mannequin to try and even attempt to wear it's it. A pain in the backside, get a half. And oh, completely, back on, you know, completely. So. Then we'll move on to the back wall real quick. Um, we've got the quarter scale Batman's uh, begins and the Dark Knight alongside the Noble Collection Cowl. Down below we've got a DC Direct Batman bus half scale. One of the newest things that I've just received in the last two weeks is the Sideshow Premium Format Red Sonja. I'm really keen to try and show you guys that uh, in next um, time we are here to do episode 3. Moving down, Master Replica's Jack Sparrow Flintlock. My Blade Runner display which I've yet to finish. That's a, a, a pistol that I'm going to convert and paint. And then below we've got the Gladiator helmet by Factory X. Moving up, generic Biker Scout lid. Um, the RS Prop Masters X-Wing helmet, red fan. Moving down, this is the 1-6 scale Star Wars um, stuff. So we have the, uh, the DX-07 Luke Skywalker set with the recent um, Hot Toys look Jedi from Return of the Jedi. We have a New Hope Vader. Uh, and then rounding off the 1-6, we have Shiro Inui from Rogue One and K2SO, both with um, in-person signature plaques. And I think what we'll do is, as we move to the next section, which is the review, I'm going to pick these two my to have good, a look good at. Good shout, two of my favourites. So we'll, we'll pick these two up in the next section. To round off, we've got the United Cutlery Witch King Helm. Um, two prints I just want to pay particular attention to. These are by a guy called Paul Butcher. I uh, found them at Comic Con last year. His prints are absolutely astounding. And this has got to be one of the best layer prints I've ever saw. And then moving on, you've got Bush. And you can see in Bush's um, visor, you can see the uh, reflection of the Han and Carbonite. Really stunning prints. Um, up here... Peter Mayhew, Chewbacca, autograph, signed in person at Celebration. And then one of the things that I'm, I'm most proud of is my Michael J. Fox display. So there we are. There's my ugly mug alongside Michael J. Fox. 
Um, big t-shirt regret on that one. That was my first ever convention picture. <laughs> and I now wish I'd worn something a little bit more generic. Back in the and there's Michael J. Fox's autograph. Uh, rounding off to the left, we have an original Dark Knight Joker poster. 47 Ronin Sword from the same movie. This cabinet is a work in progress. Um, that's my Auto 9, which needs a display case. We then have the Hollywood Collectors Group Signature Edition Rambo 2 Knife and um, Jade Buddha Charm. So I've picked out these two things that we said before. These, these, these two things, Rogue One was probably the biggest surprise from the Star Wars universe in recent years. Um, from the minute, I think we, we went to the cinema to see it together. We went in the midnight show, I believe. Yeah, mm -hmm. and we walked away absolutely wild. Yeah. Absolutely wild. Incredible. And as soon as these two figures were released, and there's the only other one they've done from like the main rebel gang was Jenny Erso, mm -hmm. which I had mm -hmm. and I've sold yeah. again, prop regret. But these two, you know, the, the, the Shiro Imui in K2SO, I think are probably two of the best characters from the actual movie. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I've picked these two out is because I feel as if they're, they're that extra bit special. These two figures, I just think they're absolutely magnificent. You know, you've got the, the signed plaques there. Donnie Yen, who was announced for MCM, MCM. Comic Con London 2017. Was that London? Was that? Yeah, right. yeah, we flew down in the morning just to mm -hmm. get down for Donnie Yen and flew back up at night. Um, Donnie Yen was a bit of a surprise guest. He's one mm -hmm. of these guys you never think would, have, would go to a convention. One of the best characters I think is played by Alan Tudyk. And it's K2SO. Okay. Funny character. He's hilarious. I mean, you don't expect a droid mm -hmm. to be funny. C C3PO was funny in his own way. Mm -hmm. You know, he was funny because he was almost like the bumbling comic relief. Yep. Whereas K2SO was sarcastic. Mm -hmm. And he had the best lines in Rogue One. Uh, I don't know what you th about if he's your favourite character, but he's certainly my favourite. No, he was a big, big character for me. I, I absolutely loved him. But... Um, <laughs> My main character that I do like is, is this man. I thought he was fantastic. And obviously you've got the, the same plank for yep. K2SO as well, who so we met. Alan Tudyk. We met Alan yeah. at London Comic Con. That was two years ago. It wasn't last year, it was 2017. Right. Yeah, K2SO, um, a lot of die cast parts in this, right, so it's, it's quite heavy, a bit right. of weight to it. You know, it's, it's got metal legs. I believe the arms are partially metal. Yeah, a little bit extra special because I think having the same plaques mm -hmm. really adds a little bit to the display of both characters. Mm -hmm. from and and the plaques, the plaques are custom made um, yes. by a guy, Ariel Martinez. Martinez. Although, uh, I actually, I'll plug it in the newer. Mm -hmm. I run a Star Wars uh, Facebook collector's group uh, called Star Wars The Cargo Hold. Um, now, Ariel is a member of my group. So you can be contacted through there. Ariel is just one of a, a number of f um, makers and manufacturers on the cargo hold, doesn't mm, he? He's, yeah. he's, you, you've managed to draw in some of the, the, the greatest talents mm -hmm. um, into the group, which I'm sure we'll talk about more. Yeah, we'll, we we'll have we'll that later on at some point. Um, so uh, let's stay on target. Uh, so what are we going to talk about next, Colin? This bad boy. So yeah, the um, the RS Prop Masters mm -hmm. Red Five X Wing helmet. Um, now I've owned this since it was released. Uh, I'm going to say about a year ago. It was about a year ago, I. And since that point, RS have brought out more than just the Red Five. Mm -hmm. They've also done. Um, well, they've done signature editions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's like was that Red Four? Is that Jack, Jack Clark? Jack Clark that one? was kind of all red. Yep, that's a red one. They've done um, Dennis Lawson. Dennis Blue. Lawson. That's one I have on pre order. Yep. So I got a second bite of that because I missed mm -hmm. the first wave. Mm -hmm. So Dennis Lawson. What was Wedge? Did he red. have a call sign? Red 2, was he not? Red 2. Oh, yeah, it is. I think it's Red 2. Um, you had Garrick. Garrick Hagen. Hagen. Uh, which was Biggs. Biggs. That also, uh, I don't know what the call sign bigs. The signature edition of that one, again, available from RS Prop Masters. Yeah. And I know they are planning other ones as well, I believe. Uh, but you can also, if there's any specific one 
design you, you would like, all you do is contact them, uh, RS Prop Masters, and they will happily uh, do any design that you, you, you wish. Recently they've just announced a very limited run of a screen use Y-Wing helmet, mm -hmm. which is again, limited, to 100, wasn't limited it? to 100. I think I've got number 18 coming that way. And they are sold out. This was uh, uh, really pushed on the group as well. Quality and care. I mean, you can see they're hand-painted, I believe. Yeah, they're all hand-painted. Um, and some decals as well there. Yeah, decals. But they're all weathered by hand as well. Yeah, and yeah. and this, is, this is a New Hope version. This isn't as dirty as the one from Empire. Aye, uh, ESB. Um, was and the, the visor's adjustable. It's on the Velcro, so you can adjust it either up or down. And it's all, um, it's all lined inside. Because you know, I've just had it on, and yep. it's, it's so pretty comfy actually. It's pretty, pretty comfy, yeah. yeah it's pretty so cool. as you see, it's kind of lined inside as well now. Yeah, you've got the earpads, pads, um, which can be taken out there, stuck with Velcro, so you can take them out and adjust them uh, as well. And you see, you've got the chin strap and the little mic tip. And RS Prop Masters also do the full costume. Oh, yeah. They, they do yeah. the costume yeah. as well, so you can actually order the full. The full lot. So you get like the orange jumpsuit, the jump the chest suit, box, the chest box, the boots, the, the boots, you know, the, the, the webbing, the strap, yeah, and all that. everything. Unfortunately, I don't believe you can buy one of the run of this. But as Eddie said, you can certainly get a custom one made, mm -hmm. no problem at all. I'm sure mm -hmm. RS will be happy to take any inquiries. Um, shameless plug for RS there. But um, yeah, we can't talk highly enough of RS. They are they're very good at what they do. Mm -hmm. I'm very chuffed with this particular helmet. So, that's the reviews, yep. where we talk a bit about news and um, conventions. Yes. Okay, so let's talk conventions. Ooh, nice. Uh, now, there's a few crackers coming up this year. It's the London Film, well, Comic, London Film, London Film, Film Comic Con. Last weekend in July, 26th yeah. to 28th. So, we will be attending. Um, so, we'll talk about that one first. So, who and, uh, are you going to meet? Who have you, you bought tickets for? Uh, Diamond Pass for Robert Carlyle. Mm -hmm. um, biggest, you know, uh, Robert Carlyle role's got to be Begbie in Trainspot. <laughs> Absolutely wicked. Fantastic. Begbie. One of the best uh, uh, characters mean, ever. A good portrayal of a good uh, Glaswegian. Yeah, 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 absolutely. I mean, he only was he lives... Was he or was he from Edinburgh? Uh, well, he's, he's from Glasgow. I know, aye. I know he's from Edinburgh. I think he was in oh, he was he's from Edinburgh. Aye, he was in Edinburgh, wasn't he? But a good um, portrayal of a Scottish character or something. Oh, fantastic. Like absolutely fantastic. Hilarious. Um, so, so Robert Carlyle's going to be there at Comic-Con, I think it's Saturday and Sunday. Um, so I just instantly, within seconds, bought the Diamond mm -hmm. Pass. Uh, the next guest I, I've purchased is Christina Ricci. Mm -hmm. um, who is Wednesday from the Adams Family films. The next two that popped up for me were William Zabka, Zabka. William Zabka yeah. and what's the other chance? Martin Cove. Martin Cove, who are from the original 80s Karate Kid. If we yeah. could get Ralph Macho, that would be absolutely amazing. Well, I met him. I know he, he's he been. He done Comic Con, I don't know how many years ago that was. 2014. Was that where you go? <laughs> <laughs> then announced, I think three Fridays ago, um, Robert Patrick, who's mm -hmm. T1000 and Terminator mm -hmm. 2, yeah. 30 pound a piece, really good. They also announced Charlie Sheen. Charlie Sheen, no, I'm just saying. No, it's one of these guys, Charlie Sheen, I think it's 250 odd pounds for a diamond pass. Um, Charlie Sheen to me is Chris from Platoon. Yeah. That was his name, wasn't it, Chris? Great movie. He was also. And uh, hot shots, mm -hmm. so they kind of parody all like yeah. Rambo and Top Gun and all that. Mm -hmm. And he's been in other things like Major League and a couple more, like the, the, the TV series Two and a Half Men, which I've never really watched. Mm -hmm. He's a really, really good guest. Mm -hmm. But is he worth the money for a week? What is it, 85 or 95 for a it's 40 or something? Uh, 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 and then the last one that was announced the same day was Ian McDermott, who's the Emperor mm -hmm. from the original Star Wars trilogy. And then was Emperor Palpatine in the prequels. And um, obviously, if you watch the trailer for uh, uh, the Rise of Skywalker, Rise of Skywalker yeah. you hear him yeah. laughing at the end. So yeah. there's every possibility. Which I've, get, I've got mixed feelings about. Yeah. Oh, sorry, back back on track. Back on track. So who else were you? Were you getting? So this is that. This is where I have drawn a line because I haven't yet. I'm going to go for Robert Patrick, Martin Cove, and William Zabka, but I haven't booked them yet mm -hmm. because there is going to be. Seemingly a huge yeah, announcement tomorrow. tomorrow. So 
I think what we'll do is, if we've got the time, if it's a big one, we'll do a follow up tomorrow night. Aye. If so it's we'll, we'll somebody this, we'll really record, worth, uh, we'll sit here and we'll record a reaction. Aye. And if you don't see what a reaction is, then it means we're disappointed. And we feel it was crap. So, good guess. Aye. So there is a there is a number. Oh, another good guest, which uh, which I was really excited with was Lee Majors. The six million dollar man. The six million dollar man. So I booked my photo with Robert Kaleo. Uh -huh. Um William Zabka. William Zabka. And um Martin Cove. Martin Cove. Mm -hmm. Have you booked Lee Majors? Lee Majors? Yeah. Um Paul Blake. Greedo. Oh Paul Blake, he's a lovely man. Uh, and Guy Henry. Now, Guy, oh, he Guy yes. Henry oh, was Guy Henry. um he done Governor Tarkin. Governor Tarkin in Rogue One. <laughs> so um so that was a uh, London. London Film Comic Con. Mm -hmm. Now, there's another few conventions coming up that are really, really cool guests. So, we'll start with The Love of Horror. Oh, yeah. The now, one that's in Manchester stuff. doing a Lost Boys reunion. So, I think they've got about six guests, I think, now. So, but the main one is Kiefer Sutherland. Oh, yes. Which is a, yes. a biggie. Which yes. is a biggie. And for me, Jason Patrick as well. They've also got, uh, oh, what's his name? But he's the, one of the guys that it does it, one of the songs in it. Um, I still believe with the saxophone in the yeah. movie and that. So he he's there as well. He, he's performing live mm -hmm. as well at this event. And then there's also the other guy that done the other song in it. Um, I can't even remember the name. This is terrible. But anywho, <laughs> they uh, start writing these down. They start writing them down. But anywho, <laughs> the guys are there. There's about six of them. Uh, it's going to be a pretty cool convention. And this Monopoly event's put on great like. Now, backgrounds or now for oh, photo shoots, they do some difference. really unique stuff. I yeah. mean, because we, I was at one uh, the last time that was uh, they done ET. Mm -hmm. uh, so I met what's his name? Henry Henry Thomas. Henry Thomas. Who played yeah. early in ET? And what they done was they done this big uh, scene. You no, know, it's like in the, the forest with the bikes and you no know, ET and the bike in the basket and you no know, the, the spaceship in the background. So then we have. Um, the Comic Con Scotland, mm -hmm. and that's in Edinburgh. Mm -hmm. Now, they've no got a lot of guests announced at this moment in time, but the guests that they have announced are pretty amazing. Oh, for so, Scotland, yeah. Yeah. so first off, they announced uh, Christopher Lloyd, and they're doing a big photo shoot with that as well, where you can get like you know, the DeLorean in it. And then we have like Tim Rose, right, which is obviously not in the scale of Christopher Lloyd, no. but Tim Rose played. He's a, he's a Admiral Ackbar yeah, and iconic. Return of the Jedi. It's a cat! <laughs> right, so that's my quick impersonation. But yeah, so he was there, obviously, in Return of the Jedi. And then we have Buck Young. But then they, they announced, it was a big build up for this one. Um, mm -hmm. I, I guessed it. I guessed it. You guessed it as well. Because they gave away a subtle clue Aye. that they were bringing somebody with four letters mm -hmm. to Scotland. And the only person I could think of with four letters was... Jean-Claude Van Damme. JCVD. And he was announced. Oh, it's £150 pound for a photograph. Is that how much it is? Aye. Wow. Now, normally, but they've also offered uh, £500, just under £500, pound four, where you can have dinner. Uh, yeah, £495. There'll be a meet, so he'll be there. I think it was five tables. Fifty yeah. people added. Fifty yeah. people dinner. Ten people per table. Five tables. Uh, and he's going to do like a Q and A. And he'll do a Q and A, and you can have dinner, and he'll come round each table. But he'll be there. I think it was for an hour, or something like that. Is it? Uh, but anyway, I remember kind of what it was about yeah. ten minutes a table. Yeah. So he'll come round and. He sit. also said his video is going to get people up on stage. Yep. So I. So when he's doing that, he'll get people yeah. up on the stage. So it's pretty cool. I'd love to meet him. It's one hundred and fifty pound, but normally because they said this, you know, that was another hint that he done the black tie events. Yeah. So yeah. there's another company. Uh, experience with. Yeah. We've done the experience with. So they do like experience with Alan Schwarzenegger and experience with Sylvester Stallone. Uh, they've done like uh, Robert De Niro, Pacino. Robert De Niro, Pacino. They've done Van Damme as well. Mm -hmm. So my mm -hmm. big one, quite a hang me was uh, uh, the uh, experience with Sylvester Stallone. Yeah, I've really been to two of them, and I'm a huge Rocky fan. Mm -hmm. um, apart from Star Wars, Star Wars is my biggie, but next to that is Rocky. So then the next um, convention would be 
The love of sci-fi. In December. Ah, yes. The love of sci-fi in December. And so far, there we go. Bill Duke, who else is that for the love of sci-fi? I'm sure we're missing a couple of guests, but it's probably too well, early. Peter Weller. Peter Weller. Robocop. Oh, and Ray Wise. Ray Wise oh, was just announced. Ray Wise is Leon Nash. I'm and really, Robocop. really, really happy. Yeah. Another announcement was for Liverpool next year. Um, and that was... I put me in the spot now and I can't even remember. I've been saying I've got a really good memory up to now. It was... No, um, give me a hint. Oh, <laughs> that's terrible. It was a biggie for you as well. It was a biggie for me and I can't even remember. You were super was. excited when you seen it. Reminds me of the blank. Iron Man 2. Oh, Mickey Rook. Yeah, Mickey Rook. He is a brilliant... Mickey Rook. And not for Iron Man 2. Mm -hmm. For films like The Wrestler. Have you ever saw The Wrestler? Great movie. It's brilliant. I mean, it's not like a big A-list movie, but it's a fantastic... It does such a job. It's some good ones. Lots of conventions to do this year. It's going to be pretty expensive. Yes. Um, you need to sacrifice some collectibles in order to afford all this, I think. But, but we'll, we'll keep yeah. you up to date on all, all that. Let's, but let's do it every couple of weeks when we do these videos. We will give you the latest guest announcements and have a chat chat about it. And if there's any, any other coins that we we'll find out about, we'll let you know. Yeah. So, obviously, that relates to movies, etc. So, let's talk movies. A couple of movies. We'll, we'll not go on about much longer about this. Uh, we'll, we'll touch on it. So, you have a film that you have just watched. I have. So. I, for the first time in my adult life, or life, full stop, believe it or not, have just watched Halloween. So, did it do it for you? The problem is you're watching Halloween when it was made in the 70s. Yeah. And you're comparing it to modern day standards. I think it was 1970. So, for me, you know, you become... Accustomed to a certain level of um, I can't see that, so acting I and plot lines and story, and I reckon if I'd watched it back early eighties, it would have had more of an impact. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong; I actually quite enjoyed it. I thought this uh, it was you know the the whole the shape, um, played by Nick Castle. Mm -hmm. The shape was was quite terrifying. How he broke out of this mental mental institution. He was branded a man or a boy that should never see the light of day by the doctor and he managed somehow to escape mm -hmm. um, and then went back to his hometown Had and then feel. just started to stalk Jamie Lee Curtis's character and others mm -hmm. and he just had a lust for killing he just wanted mm -hmm. to kill people I mean that's, that was his whole premise mm -hmm. um, I did quite enjoy it the, the bit that I thought when he first, when he, as a wee boy at the very beginning, when he puts the clown mask on and murders his sister. His sister. Oh, spoiler alert! Spoiler <laughs> alert! It was like, you know, it was like the, 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 the acting was like, oh no, don't kill me! Ah, ah, ah. It wasn't like the terrifying blood curdling See, scene I, I think, that it I should think have been. I movies then are it totally different. Like I get it because I went to see it again. I mean, I love Halloween and. We were at the convention, was it last year? Yeah. Nick Castle yeah, was Nick there. Castle Nick was Castle, there. who yeah. played the man behind the mask. Um, got to meet him. Uh, uh, nice enough guy, you know, but big fan of Halloween. Big fan of John Carpenter. Mm -hmm. um, went to see this in the cinema. It was last Halloween. It was, I took the night off my work. Went, right, took I my two daughters. That. Took my two daughters with me. And uh, Lucy, my youngest daughter, 16. Uh, it says it was alright. The other daughter, uh, twenty and nineteen at the time, I think she was, uh, says it was dreadful. Again, it was just that. See that what you're saying is just all that. If you don't day. watch uh, at the time, it's it loses a lot. I mean, don't get me wrong. As I said, it was good. The storyline was good. I liked the tension. The music is brilliant. The music was good. You know the fact that it's like oh get out get out and but it's like Jamie Lee Curtis runs on her house to get away from the shape. And locks the door and you're thinking, yeah, great, you're in a house full of windows. He's going to get in. You're not safe yet. 
you know, run down the street. Don't just run back to another yeah. house. I think so all horrors are guilty of yeah, that kind this of thing. This is why I don't like horrors, because mm. I'll sit there and go, this is stupid. Right. You're, you're not doing what, what what you would really do in real it's life. Like, it's like, you hear a noise and you're going to investigate. Yeah, that kind like, of thing. Like, don't open the cupboard! You're going to this dark room. Like, Jamie Lee cuts to get away from the shape, goes into a closet. And, and makes noise. I mean, she's she, she's not making any secret of the fact she's in the closet because she not only knocks all the coat hangers as he's coming up the stairs, but then remember. sits and whimpers in the corner as mm -hmm. well. And then the shape comes up and decides to rattle the door for a, at least a good two or three minutes before he decides I can break through that with mm -hmm. you know with my strength and my knife. But don't get me wrong, it was good, but it just sums up why I don't watch horrors nowadays no, um, because I, I think I, watching something <clears> back, <throat> mm -hmm. I don't. What does it for me, um, and, and this is going to be the next episode's recommendation to watch, is tension. I like tension. I like that whole, oh, Jesus, he's going to get you. So the recommendation I'm going to make for next week is a movie that you introduced me to, and it's The Hitcher with Rutger Hoer. And C. Thomas Hill. And C. Thomas Hill. The Hitcher, what year was that? 70s? No, 80s. 80s, 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 80s. I think it's maybe about 85 or something like that, 86 maybe. Well, I only watched that two years ago on your recommendation right. and I loved it. It's a great movie. Uh, great I mean, great movie. You're sitting going, oh, he, he, he stitched you up. He, you know, I don't want to ruin it because you have to watch it. If, if you're going to do anything between this episode and the next, get a copy of the picture. The film I went to see last night with my wife uh, was Robert the Bruce. It's kind of been tagged as Braveheart 2. Yeah. Um, so when you see it last night, it stars Angus McFadden, who was the the man that played Robert the Bruce in Braveheart. Who, as we know, Robert, uh, Braveheart was an absolutely fantastic movie. Uh, Not that we're bad. Big epic, epic battles, historically inaccurate. Nevertheless, it was a good film. Um, and then recently, there was the Chris Pine one that came out, from Netflix, which was the Outlaw King, Outlaw which King. is about that Robert the Bruce yeah, as well, was really good. which is good, but again, I, I'm spraying for the, the movie, but quickly on that, I love that movie, maybe we'll talk about that another time, but I love that movie except for one part which was inaccurate and it really kind of put me off a wee bit, but I, I, there's rumour has it that they're going to be maybe making another couple uh, leading up to the Battle of Bannockburn, uh -huh. um, rumours, so anywho, Robert the Bruce, seen it last night. Uh, great cast, great acting. Uh, it's nothing compared to like the, the epicness, the Hollywood glamour of Braveheart. It's not a big budget movie, um, but nevertheless, it's, uh, I thoroughly enjoyed it. My wife uh, hated it. Oh, did she? she was like, get me out of here, how long is this on for? <laughs> she just doesn't get stuff like that. Um, I say it was a good story. Uh, because it kind of, it, I'm not going to get too much, but it basically starts off when um, he kill or I don't know. He starts off when, when he's kind of about to go in the, the run. So he basically Robert the Bruce disappears for a number of years, um, and he's he basically he's he's fought like I think it was six battles against the English, and he lost. So he disappears. And nobody knows where he kind of went to for the, these number of years. So what they've done in this movie is kind of made a wee story as to where he went mm -hmm. in that time frame. Uh, up until he, he reappears again. Uh, because basically, this film is basically, it's no good. Like, English in it. English uh, battle and troops and all that. It's basically about Scotland v Scotland. Because all the clans. The warring clans. Because yeah. all the warring clans in Scotland um, were... It, they were offered like 50 gold pieces to hunt and capture Robert the Bruce right. and Scotsmen, uh, other clan members uh, who were supporters of, uh, what's his name, John Commons, John Conan, I think his name was, or Commons. So anywho, all these people who supported him went after the Bruce to try and capture him, kill him, uh, or send him back to, or do it. England or London to be tried by uh, the English uh, king, however. So, um, so basically that's what it's about. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's not like all these big epic battles like Braveheart, but I really enjoyed the story. I thought it was a great film. Um, 
you know, a few times felt a wee bit kind of emotional. Um, you know, it's, it kind of plugs at the heartstrings a bit yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and Angus McFadden is Robert the Bruce is is, is fantastic. Uh, so I, it's good that they've brought him back. Well, it is to do, to do that, Robert well, Bruce, he, because he, he was the Bruce and Braveheart. Mm -hmm. He's now associated with that yep. role. Yep. So what I think is really good is they've brought him back as the lead actor. Well, to play it's him, again. but it's him that that hang me this project. Oh, so he's the one that's kind of like kind of kickstarted this he, whole he, this whole thing. Well, this is that he's been he. Ever since Braveheart, he's wanted to do something, a continuation. Yeah, what yeah, happened yeah. next? What happened with Robert the Bruce? Yeah, yeah. So, although Braveheart ends with Robert the Bruce on the battle at the field of Bar Bannockburn, Bar ready to charge the English, yeah, yeah. Um, as a newly crowned. That hasn't crowned. happened in this movie yet. You know, this all predates this. This kind of is, I, you know, way b just before that. So he's no went to battle yet with the English. Um, obviously, oh sorry, he's fought them like six times in minor battles but he's lost yeah so this is before uh, the bannock burn where you see him charging at the end uh braveheart so maybe this could be something he might do it might you know, i don't know um uh, they might go forward and do something like that but it would be good to see but anyway do i recommend it aye don't expect like the as i say the glamorous hollywood movie yeah, so it's not hollywood uh, no. it's, much battle scenes Mm, there's, there's fight scenes, but it's mere hand to hand combat, kind of thing like that. It's not get the big, uh, as I say, the big battles where the troops all yeah. lined up. No, that's not like that. Um, which I thought was different, and it, it tells a different story of Robert the Bruce. Right, basically, right. you know, it's right. his struggles, uh, which I really enjoyed. You know, again, finding out a wee bit more about him and that. So that was good, die and McFadden was was great. I'm going to end this section with a piece of movie news. Oh, right, cool. So, da, da, da. Robocop. I am a huge, 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 huge fan of Robocop. Wait, I don't know much about Not this. Not Robocop 2 or 3 or all the Robocop series, but definitely Robocop 1, Robocop 2. No, they are the, they are the Robocops for me. Right. Have you heard of a guy called Neil Blomkamp? Never. Right, Neil Blomkamp is responsible for three what I would classify as quite big Hollywood style movies. District 9, mm -hmm. Elysium. Is that the match for No, that's no. Chappie. That's right. The ah, right. That's a third movie he brought out. So he has announced that he is going to do a Robocop sequel. So you know Robocop was directed by Paul Van Der Hoven mm -hmm. in Robocop 1. And I think 2 was done by Irving Kitchener. Oh, well, that was Empire. Empire Strikes Back director. Mm -hmm. So, Paul van der Hoven brought Robocop to life. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was the guy that basically put Robocop together as mm -hmm. a director. So, Blomkamp clearly draws a lot of his inspiration from Robocop and mm -hmm. Paul van der Hoven. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, if you look at Chappie, it's a, a police robot. It's um, the, 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 the alternative in Chappie is called the Moose. And mm -hmm. it's very reminiscent of Ed 209, mm -hmm. which is it's the same look, it's the same yeah. feel. And it's one division pitching their idea against another division. Mm -hmm. And Robocop and Chappie were very successful, whereas Ed 209 and the Moose were an absolute mm -hmm. disaster. So Chappie is very close to Robocop. Um, so Neil Blomkamp is making well, a, is a sequel. Is that a sequel to the first one? Or a sequel? It's or a or sequel that? to the first one. Right. So it takes place, the, the actual script for the sequel was already wrote back after Robocop 1. Right. I forget the, the fella's names, but there was two guys who wrote a script for a sequel and it was never, nothing was ever done about it. They went in a different direction for Robocop 2. Mm -hmm. Blomkamp has found this script or has access to this script and has basically said through Twitter and everything that he wants to bring the sequel to life and he's 100 or 1 million percent going to do it the way Van der Hoven would have done it. So Van der Hoven didn't take it any further forward in Robocop 1. Mm -hmm. But he says he is basically in Van der Hoven's shoes and he is going to make the sequel just like Van der Hoven would have done. In fact, he's, he's come out and said 1 million percent that he will use the original suit. Oh, so it's not going to be a new suit? Like it'll probably, it won't be the, the actual screen used original. I know what you mean, but it'll be the a the same design. original. It'll be exactly the same in right. Robocop 1. So that's the latest piece of news um, that I read in the last week. We'll try and bring you some more news each time we do a new episode. We'll start actually reading web pages and try and picking up some tweets and stuff from, from various people. Um, but I think that's us. 
Hi, th thanks for sticking with us for this long if you've made it to this point, unless you've just fast forward or skipped the last 45 minutes. Um, yeah, we've rambled on quite a lot. Right. I think, you know, it's a, it's a good start. It is a pilot after all, so thanks very much for sticking with us and getting to this point. And we've, all, we've got lots more we want to touch on uh, for future episodes, so remember, click like and subscribe. subscribe. Yeah, subscribe. Uh, and Obviously, we, we know we're getting more followers. We'll certainly. Well, the more the more subscriptions we get, the more views we get, the more encouraged we'll be to talk more nonsense mm -hmm. in front of this this camera. And this was like you know we've, we've done millions of edits to get to this point so far because we just didn't know how to approach this. This, no. is, this is the first time we've ever done something like this. I think we're a bit more comfortable now, but um, it can only get better. Surely, Aye. surely, we'll, 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 and we'll not talk as much next time we'll actually show you some stuff well we'll be doing some <laughs> reviews um other reviews uh, yeah so next uh, week Gordon's next collection yep. and in the next uh, video will be at my house uh, and we'll have a wee quick look around in my collection and I'll do a couple of we'll do a couple of reviews on a couple of things and talk more about cons and movies and stuff and so, that's basically it until next time we will see you See you, you later. See you later.